Let's continue talking about stoichiometry, the last few pages of chemistry, page 1125. And a lot of this is going to relate to page T and following in your workbook. I have often said, and I'm going to say again, that I think the chemistry pace adds a lot of content that is not necessary and it sounds confusing the way they word things. They make it sound like there's four different types of problems that we're going to have to solve here. And I want to kind of simplify this little chart that they have. I forget what page this is on. But the mole-to-mole -mole relationships is really the key. That's the one we really, really, really need to understand. These others, mole to mass, mass to mole, mass to mass, those just involve small variations <clears throat> of the, the mole to mole. You're always doing mole to mole. So if they give you mass, we have to convert it to moles. If you come out with an answer in moles and they want it in mass, then you just do a conversion at the end, okay? It's not like four different kinds of problems. So we really only have one type of problem, and that's the mole to mole. So we're going to talk about those. Now on page T at the top, <clears throat> there's a section where it says, write out all the possible mole ratios. <clears throat> so I'm looking at this particular equation. This one's not in your pace um, for you to do, but let's just talk about how we would do it. We have two moles of this iron oxide, and that's going to yield four moles of iron and three moles of oxygen. <clears throat> so one ratio is we could say two moles. Now, you know what? I noticed in the score key, they, they always abbreviate it M-O-L. Um, I don't know why that's a big abbreviation for, for writing out mole with an E. But um, then we write the Fe2O3. And we can put that over 4 Fe, okay? So that's one mole ratio. We could start with the top one, 2 moles of Fe2O3. And that would also correspond to 3, oops, I forgot to write the word mole, didn't I? Um, of O2. I should have had mole right here. <clears throat> Is there one other? Yes, there's one other one, and that's the four moles of Fe, and that corresponds to three moles of O2. You say, well, Mr. Anger, what if I had four moles of Fe over two moles of Fe2O3? Fine, that's actually the same thing. So we can switch the top and bottom of any of these, okay? So in a way, you could say we have six different ratios, but um, since we're still comparing the same two quantities, we say we have three mole ratios, okay? So um, anyways, I don't think this section should be too hard for the top of page T. I would, after you do that, stop and then compare it to the score key right away and don't move on until you've sure you've figured out this little section. All right, let's do this one problem together. Um, problem 33, <clears throat> the directions say to balance the equation and then complete the following stoichiometric problem. And it's kind of cool, they give us the names of the compounds, but they also give us the formulas, so that's helpful. Iron, three oxide. Remember the Roman numeral three tells us that the iron has a charge of positive three, or they call it the oxidation number, positive three. <clears throat> and then the hydroxide is the OH. And remember that's a gang, so it always stays together. And we have the subscript of three next to that. All right, reacts with sulfuric acid to produce iron sulfate and water. All right. Let's see what we have. I'm looking at it here with you, and um, the iron, that would be kind of easy to fix. Let's start with the sulfate. Do you notice that over here we have three of the sulfates, but over on the other side we only have one sulfate. Now we cannot add a subscript, but I can add a three out front. 
okay? So now I have the sulfates balanced. Let's look at iron. All right, so iron is two over here, and I only have one on the other side. So if I put a two in front of that, so now the iron is balanced and the sulfate is balanced. Let's see what that does to our hydrogen and oxygen. This means I have two oxygen on the left and six hydrogen, okay? Two hydrogen, six, because you multiply the two out front times the, co the subscript of three. So I have six hydrogen, two oxygen. So let's go over here to the right. What would I need to do? If I put a three, no, I need to have um, No, let's see, that's that's not going to work, is it? Because um, I need to have six oxygen. Let me scratch that out. What if I make that a six? And yes, that should work now because I have the six oxygen. Over here on the left, we have six here, hydrogen, and then... 2 times 3, 6 hydrogen over here. And so that accommodates, that explains why I have 12 hydrogen on the right. Okay? So now it says, how many moles of H2SO4 will react with 4 moles of the iron, whatever that is, hydroxide? So to produce blah, blah, blah. So guess what? We can just skip over that. Don't worry about that. We're concerned about these other things. We're starting with four moles of the FeOH3. <clears throat> I'd like to put that over one, okay? And now I need to convert to H2SO4. Sorry about my sloppy handwriting on here. H2SO4, and so I'm going to put the FeOH3 on the bottom. And now let's do the, subs the uh, coefficients in front of that. So let's see. H2SO4 was 3. And then the Fe. Um, OH3 is from the beginning there, that as a prefix of 2, okay? So now when I multiply, I get 4 times 3 is 12, divided by 2 is 6. So we'll have 6 moles of H2SO4, <clears throat> okay? So this kind of like cancels against this. The answer comes out to be this compound. And we just multiply the numbers. The 4 times 3 is 12 divided by 2 gives us the 6. All right. So if you stuck with me, we helped you with one of the problems. <laughs> and uh, you can look at the uh, score key to see that they uh, did a very similar thing on there as well. So now I want you to try to do problem 34 on your own.